Hello, my name is Amanda Taylor, and I'm a clinical therapist here at Holy Family Memorial Behavioral Health, and I'd like to welcome you to our Coping with Coronavirus. Today, I'm going to be talking about parenting during uh, the, the coronavirus. Um, being a parent is hard, and it's even made harder now with all the extra uh, tasks and responsibilities that uh, you're being made to, to engage in. Uh, some of the extra kind of sources of stress as a parent now during this time include uh, disrupted routines and also adjusting to new routines, uh, you know, managing uh, distance or online learning for your kids, uh, just financially, maybe worrying about uh, getting basic needs met like housing and food and utilities, uh, the self-isolation that um, is happening because of not being able to you know, go to school or uh, go to work uh, or go to activities like uh, you know, camps or sporting events. Uh, and also the stress of uh, missing out on major milestones. Um, and, you know, how you as a parent or a caregiver respond to situations really impacts how your kids respond. Children are really keen observers and often notice and react to stress or anxiety in their caregivers uh, or what they see in their peers or in the community as a whole. Um, and as a parent, if you can uh, find ways to manage your own mental health, uh, anxiety, or uh, feelings of sadness or depression, um, you can really do well to manage your own children's uh, mental health. So I have some uh, suggestions and tips on how you as a parent can uh, help your kids and help yourself uh, cope with this situation. Um, so the first tip is routines. Probably routines have been disrupted over the last couple months. Uh, school, not going to school, having to do online schooling, not being able to do uh, extracurricular activities. Um, so it's really important that you create a new routine. And you can work with your kids on uh, getting their input on what might be uh, a good routine for them. Uh, so some routine and structure can often really help to decrease anxiety uh, because it does give some sense of control during a time when a lot of things are out of our control. So uh, things that you can incorporate into a routine are bedtimes, uh, waking times. Oftentimes, if you don't have to go to school, uh, there's not necessarily a set time to get up. So it's figuring out what, you know, with your child, uh, depending on their age, what might be a good uh, time to get up and helping them to uh, get into that routine. Um, it could be routines around, you know, uh, uh, meal times, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, uh, new routines uh, with, you know, just completing uh, tasks and responsibilities, uh, new routines in uh, being able to, you know, have fun and do enjoyable activities. So uh, setting up those new routines it's really um, up to you to decide what that's going to look like based upon um, what you and your child have going on in your lives. Um, the other important part is maintaining routines that you do have the ability to maintain. Um, those things could be like family dinners. Uh, maybe you generally had some sort of game night or movie night uh, or a special night when you all went out to uh, you know out to eat um, just trying to maintain those as best as you can and making some changes in those routines uh, you know to be able to follow some of the safety guidelines uh, another uh, strategy is uh, balancing out uh, each day uh, the completion of responsibilities with also uh, those activities that are fun. So a couple ways to do that might be uh, writing out a list. Everyone in the household writes out a list of three activities, uh, fun activities that they would like to you know, accomplish during the day. And then also three tasks or responsibilities um, that each person needs to complete each day. 
uh, by writing out these uh, these different uh, activities. Maybe it's uh, in, on a calendar, or maybe it's on a whiteboard or a chalkboard. Um, so it's visible and you could have, you know, each person, you know, each kid check off when they've completed those activities. That gives a sense of accomplishment and feeling like uh, each day is meaningful and purposeful. Um, and it could be setting out that list uh, maybe the night before uh, the things you want to do the next day. Or it could be uh, in the morning, uh, each morning, writing down some of those activities that you would like to complete. Um, and also, you know, some of the fun activities could include uh, things like arts or crafts, uh, playing outside or going to the park, or maybe, uh, you know, talking with a friend or a classmate uh, through FaceTime or Zoom and helping your child to kind of set up those activities. Uh, some of the responsibilities or tasks could include things like uh, learning or educational activities. Um, it could be household chores. Um, you know, you know your family best and your kids best. So it's, uh, you know, working together um, to figure out what might some of those things you could do uh, each day. Um, another strategy could be, uh, you know, learning uh, and education. And, um, you know, as a parent, you're not necessarily an educator or a teacher, but it's maybe figuring out uh, fun ways to incorporate some of the, um, you know, the educational activities into uh, your kids' lives. Um, for math, you could incorporate that into uh, things like cooking activities, you know, having your child uh, help you look at a recipe and uh, helping them to, uh, you know, use the different uh, measuring tools, measuring spoons or cups, maybe having them practice uh, fractions by uh, doubling a recipe or maybe having a recipe, so learning those skills. Um, or if your child likes building something, could be helping them, uh, you know, with, with building some sort of project uh, but that's a great way to use uh, measuring tools, um, helping them to, uh, you know, make, uh, figure out how to cut, um, you know, where to cut, how much to cut, uh, be able to, to read, uh, read the different um, uh, measuring tapes and things like that. Or it could be uh, having them, you know, help with shopping. Uh, and budgeting, you know, taking them with to the store and saying, all right, you know, we have this budget, um, you know, having the, the kids uh, add up the prices of items, you know, as you're putting them in your cart and then uh, determining, you know, if, the, if things are within the budget or not. Um, another uh, tip is to take breaks. You know, if there are responsibilities or tasks that uh, need to be completed that required some sustained attention, um, it is maybe setting a timer, depending upon your child's age, for, you know, 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 60 minutes um, and setting that timer and having them focus on a task for that amount of time. And then when the timer goes off, that signals that a break can be taken. That break could it be you know 10 or 15 minutes or a half hour, uh, depending upon the child. Uh, that break is a time for them to kind of reset, relax, calm down, and then uh, when that break is over, going back to focusing on a task. Um, another strategy is that if you do notice that your child is really struggling uh, to you know complete tasks or uh, move forward towards, you know, some of their goals. Um, it might be, you know, providing some constructive feedback to them versus not saying anything at all or, you know, being harsh or critical. Um, so it's being able to maybe say something like, you know, I see that you seem to be not getting your homework done or um, I see that you haven't, you know, done the chores that I had asked you to do. Um, it's asking, you know, how, how you can help, how, trying to really kind of understand, you know, what they're struggling with instead of being critical. Um, you know, how can I help you to be successful? Uh, maybe asking them uh, for some of their ideas on what might be helpful so that they could get tasks done. 
um, it's being able to really kind of to show that you you care about their their point of view and their opinion um, and you want to include them in a solution um, and you know being able to then also reward behaviors that you want to see more of if they did complete you know a, um, a homework assignment being able to you know say I really appreciate that you you know you did that um, or I'm really proud of you for you know sticking with uh, that task even though I know that you really didn't want to do it um, so the rewards don't always have to be material um, and also in terms of screen time uh, it's important to monitor and limit time on devices and TV. You know, these devices, they can be fun, they can be a way to, um, you know, connect with friends, um, but it's important not to let them become used so much that they get in the way of other uh, important goals or in the way of other um, important activities. Uh, and you want to use them in a way that can be, um, you know, a balance. Um, it might be that it's limiting device time uh, to the evening, or you know, once you've completed a, a task or a responsibility, um, then you can you know spend time on your device, you know, for an hour or whatever you find to be most uh, appropriate for your child and their age. Um, this also includes limiting exposure to some of the media. Uh, so based upon your child's age, um, you know not having too excessive media exposure can create some anxiety and uncertainty and fear. Um, so being able to be open with your child about any questions they might have about, you know, what's happening in the world um, or to just hear about some of their fears and acknowledging that it's okay to feel anxious or worried um, and to, you know, provide them with uh, make sure, making sure to provide them with accurate and, and balanced uh, information. Um, another tip is to uh, be able to get outside and exercise. Uh, it's important for both parents and kids to, to move and be able to get outside and enjoy, you know, the sunshine and, and nature and not to just be uh, kind of cooped up in the house. Um, some ideas could be riding your bike together, going for a hike, Maybe playing together at a park. You know, not only is that good for your physical health, but it can be a great way uh, to spend time together with your kids. Um, so uh, overall, you know, being parent is hard work. Even harder now, as a parent, you're being asked to take on additional responsibilities. Um, you're being asked to uh, help your kids to structure a lot more of their days as you know they're when they're not in school or at camps or doing um, sporting activities or other um, you know extracurricular things um, so during this time you know it's important for you to not only you know help your kids cope but making sure to manage your own uh, mental health uh, to show that you know you self-care is important. If you can care for yourself, you're gonna be able to uh, respond more effectively um, to your children. Um, so it's you know some tips uh, to include to help you to kind of manage this uh, difficult time as a parent, you know, making sure to uh, set new routines, keep old routines that you still can creating structure, you know, being consistent, practicing your own self-care, uh, making sure to balance uh, completing responsibilities and doing fun things each day um, and making sure to, uh, you know, really listen to your kids and, uh, you know, try and understand their point of view and where they're coming from. And I hope some of these tips you can incorporate into your lives and, uh, be more effective at, at dealing with all of the challenges that have come up uh, in our world right now. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you and take care.